Alright, hello guys. In this video, we're going to be going over updates with Dorian. It looks like there's a pretty decent chance that we're still going to see that track where it likes to go out to sea and not really bring those Category 5 winds to the East Coast, but still bringing hurricane force winds and very damaging winds, as well as flooding rains. But there is still that chance that it does hit Florida, and we are going to go over that in this video and talk about the different chances of different routes it's going to take, and also the rainfall and wind that different states can expect during this storm. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, this is a very important video because we are dealing with an extremely, very, very intense hurricane here. Category 5, well above Category 5 status. I've heard, you know, I've heard 185 mile per hour winds. I've heard 200 mile per hour winds. We've seen reports. Noah is saying that there's 185 mile per hour winds, but we've heard reports that there could be even stronger winds in some areas in that storm. Some of the recon, uh, re, you know, what it, the data it picked up sometimes was picking up well closer to 200 miles per hour, which is just absolutely insane and borderline unheard of for a storm, especially this close to land. Now, it is affecting Freeport and I forget what that other Bahama Island is called just to the east of Freeport, but that island was being affected earlier today. I was watching live streams and it seemed very, very intense, but Freeport is now feeling the brunt of this one. Such a beautiful island. I've been there before uh, and it's just such, such a devastating event here taking place as this storm moves on shore and you can see they're in the eyewall right now. Some of those darker colors showing those extremely tall clouds. The red and oranges are extremely tall, but those dark blacks and some of those grays are extremely tall clouds. Uh, and you can tell that the eye wall is taking up a wide area here. Now, we are going to move on to our spaghetti model guidance. Now, you can see that if you were paying attention to some of the spaghetti models, I wish I would have, you know, taken the 0Z, the 12Z, 6Z, and then 18Z, but I just have the 18Z here. We have seen this little trend west, and I talked about this in our Facebook group, Weather Freaks. You can always join that. That'll be in the description. But we were talking about how the models have been trending slowly west since 0Z last night, and the models update every six hours. So when I say 6Z, I mean that 6 a.m. run. 12Z is that 12 p.m. run, and then uh, 18Z is our uh, 6 p.m. run, and then we'll have another run tonight coming out in a few hours. But right now, we are talking about the 18Z run because it's the most recent. Now, it is bringing it closer and closer to that Florida coast, Georgia coast, South Carolina coast, and especially North Carolina coast. Uh, by the time it reaches North Carolina, thankfully, it most likely will not be a Category 4 or 5 hurricane. It will be weaker by that point. So if it does move on shore, it's still going to be a very serious situation, but not historic by any means. Um, it's not going to be a, again, it's not going to be a category four or five. Most likely if it does hit Florida though, however, uh, it, it'll likely be a category five and be historic and absolutely, uh, they would feel monstrous effects. Uh, honestly, the worst case scenario here is that it gets very close to the coast and then rides it up because it is not going to weaken as much if it does that. And the coast is still going to feel those e extreme winds that come with it. Uh, on the north end of a storm that takes that type of track all the way up the coast, that would be absolutely devastating. Now, here's your GEFS, which is your GFS Ensemble model, spaghetti model run. And you can see that this one also takes it quite close to the Florida coast. A lot of them keep it just offshore of Florida, and one even takes it, or one or two even take it on shore of Florida. So that's why I'm telling you guys that this is not out of the question. I, I I feel like a lot of people from Florida all of a sudden started to feel like, oh, we're safe from this from this storm, and that's just absolutely not the case. Nobody's safe from the storm yet from Florida all the way up to Virginia, Delaware, New Jersey. It is still, you know, even if it's a very low percentage chance, it could ride the coast up there. I'm fairly certain that it's going to curve offshore before that, but everybody is at risk of this storm and should not feel safe yet until this one is completely done. Now, here's your JEPS, which is your uh, Canadian model ensemble run. And 
this one's all over the place, but I just wanted to show that it does have a few members still showing it hit Florida and right up the entire coast. Kind of, again, solidifying my point that this one still could hit Florida directly and go onshore of the East Coast. Uh, I don't know why people caught the idea that they're safe all of a sudden and that this one is not is like certainly not going to hit Florida or the East Coast. Uh, everybody is still at risk of getting hit you know, directly by this one. And also, if it doesn't hit you directly, that does not mean you won't be feeling winds. A very, very strong winds for that matter. And now we're looking at our intensity guidance. We're well into Category 5 status, as you can see. Probably at about 160 knot winds, which is just insane. Again, uh, I don't know if this adds up to what this is showing, but the official NOAA readings is that we have 185 mile per hour winds. I don't know if that's what 160 knots would add up to, but uh, the NOAA wind reading is much more accurate than this one. Um, you can see that it is going to weaken or maintain after this point. Now, the reason I'm not quite buying the weakening is because ever since it was a Category 2, the models have had it weakening. If you go back and watch my prior videos, you've seen that the intensity guidance models uh, always have it weakening from the time the run comes out, and it has just continued to intensify and beat all odds. This one has been the most difficult storm to forecast that I've worked with so far, and uh, it's been very troublesome just trying to you know narrow down what it's going to do. As far as intensity and track, this one has given many issues to a lot of forecasters. I would not be surprised if this one continues to intensify or if it maintains its status. With, the, with it interacting with land, obviously it would be pretty hard for it to intensify, but Again, this one just continues to keep beating the odds. Now we're going to look at our HWRF model for Dorian. And this one that you can see uh, has it very, very strong winds. You can see the wind speed. Uh, on your top right corner of your screen, you can see the max winds in within the frame. So it'll tell you what the maximum winds within this are and the uh, minimum pressure within it as well. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is not for the intensity at all, actually, as we're going to move on one frame to tomorrow, Monday. And then Tuesday, you can see it's moving towards Florida. Now, this is where a lot of models have it tracking. They have it tracking just to this point and then turning north. Notice that onshore of Florida, we're still experiencing over 50 knot winds. That means damaging winds, whether it hits or not, are to be expected for the Florida coast. Now, what's really interesting with this one, and the main reason I'm showing you it, is that as you can see by Wednesday, we see it move onshore to Florida still on this model. And it brings those 60 knot plus winds, 60 to 80 knot winds, to the Florida coast on the north end of that storm. And now, obviously, this would have terrible effects on Florida. I wanted to show this because, again, people feel like they're safe from this one and that there's no need to worry in Florida. And there are still very many reasons to worry. Uh, I can mention and name many. Uh, this storm has been difficult to forecast and the model showing one thing doesn't really mean that that's going to happen. Forecasts have been all over the place because the models have been, you know, really hard to use at this point and the forecast can easily change. And we've seen historically that storms like this can decide to curve much later. Uh, Irma is a great example that decided to curve much, much later than originally expected. So that's the main reason I'm showing you uh, that one is just to show that just because the models and the forecasts are showing one thing doesn't mean that a complete other thing is going to happen. And we've seen most of the time with this one that completely other stuff happens most of the time. Now we do have hurricane warnings for that Florida coast. Again, we are going to experience be experiencing hurricane force winds along that coast, basically no matter what, uh, whether it goes on shore or not. We're going to have a category five hurricane just offshore of Florida. Obviously we're going to have at least category one winds onshore of Florida. Uh, we see this one curve up the coast and maybe move onshore briefly in North Carolina and then offshore, but you can see the the furthest west they have this one possibly going is onshore of Florida and then in through, you know, the southeastern United States. So it can go in either direction and I'm really actually uh, uh, quite in agreement with them for widening their cone of uncertainty. They've widened it out a lot and decided to not narrow it down and that's a really good move on their part because, um, it's just not looking like the type of storm that you can pinpoint exactly where it's going to go, even in the short range. Now, here's your expected rainfall for this one. Florida coast, we're expecting in those pinks, two 
to six inches of rain. And once it moves into that burgundy color, we're looking at six inches to nine inches. And then once it moves into that gold color, which a little bit of that moves on shore of Florida, we're expecting closer to 10 inches of rain for that northern Florida coast. Again, pinks, you're still in two to six inches, so you can expect a lot of rain with this one. And then onshore of South Carolina and then into North Carolina and Virginia, the coast of those regions, you can expect a lot of those burgundies, which is, again, six to nine inches of rain and then nine inches plus in those gold colors that show up a lot there for South Carolina and North Carolina. So there's a big potential for a lot of flooding rain for a lot of those coastal southeast states. Now, here's NOAA's Tropical Storm Force Wind Forecast. If you're in that purple color in Florida, you have over a 90% chance of experiencing Tropical Storm Force winds. And then yellow through red, you're expecting anywhere from, or we'll say gold through red, you're expecting anywhere from 50 to 90% chance of Tropical Storm Force winds. Those yellow colors, you're more at like 30 to 50% chance. Hurricane Force here, again, same, same thing with the color shading. 30 to 50% chance in the yellows, gold to red, you're at 50 to 90% chance of hurricane force winds, which none of that is on shore yet. And then in the purple, you're at 90% chance. So those two Bahama Islands there, Freeport, and then the other one. It starts with an A, I forget. Now, here's the expected rainfall according to NOAA. They don't have it quite inland as the GFS does, but you do see these orange colors that are on shore. These are 6 to 10 inches of rain. Light green is 1 to 2 inches. Dark green is 2 to 4. Yellow is 4 to 6. And then your red is 10 to 15 inches of rain there for southeastern United, or southeastern North Carolina. 10 to 15 inches of rain for a lot of those areas. Very, very, very heavy rainfall. Moorhead City uh, areas, I believe, north of uh, Beaufort. And then some of those southern outer banks are all expecting 10 to 15 inches of rain. Very serious situation. Uh, and any of these areas can experience flooding. Even one to two inches of rain can bring you flooding. So 10 to 15 inches of rain can definitely bring you some very heavy flooding. Now, here's our official forecast as of right now for Hurricane Dorian. You can see we've gone ahead and widened our track as well, just like Noah did. Uh, as this seems to be the best bet with this one. Our location is 26.5 degrees north by 77.1 degrees west. Wind is 185 miles per hour and has a low pressure system or low pressure center of 910 millibars. Movement is west at nine miles per, or five miles per hour, which has really gone down in the last few days. Obviously, it was at 13 to 14 miles per hour for days, uh, probably a couple days ago, and now it's slowed down all the way to five miles per hour, which means the turn is getting closer. That doesn't necessarily mean it's imminent within the next you know 12 hours. It can happen, but it can also happen as late as, um, you know, later tomorrow into Tuesday. So that would be if it hits Florida. Now let's look at our track here. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in for you guys. And we can see that our location is again right over those Bahama Islands. And it can go offshore pretty well of Florida. And that would be best case scenario. We wouldn't feel too much effect. Or it can go onshore of Florida. Our expected track is to be just offshore of Florida though. And then you can see it potentially goes back into the Atlantic. That would be probably the middle of, of this red cone of uncertainty, but really it can go anywhere. It can go inland in some of these states. It can go well out to sea over the east or the southeastern United States, which would be extremely good news. Or it can ride that coast coastline all the way up. Now, I think it's very likely that it curves after it hits the Outer Banks and goes pretty far east after that point, but there is also that slight chance that it does decide to ride up a little bit further and actually go more towards just offshore of Delaware and New Jersey, which would again bring some rain. And it probably wouldn't be too strong of a storm by that point, but that is a possibility at this point. But So I did want to mention that, but that is pretty far out. And obviously we're going to need much more updates for this storm coming up in the coming days. I will be making many more videos for this storm, probably at least two more videos for this storm, if not more. And I would like to do a live stream if it goes on shore of Florida or goes on shore of anywhere so I can talk about the effects that people are feeling and look at, you know, current radar data and just be there for people in this time of disaster and be able to give them information and what they need to know for what's happening in the moment. So that's something that I will do if it does go on shore of any of the of the um, southeastern states, obviously. Now, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Again, stay safe. Uh, heed all evacu evacuation plans. South, or South Carolina actually has seen an evac an, a mandatory evacuation um, I think that comes into effect by tomorrow night or was it 
Tuesday. I don't know. You'll have to look into it, but it's coastal counties of South Carolina. So I would go and check if your county is under that for that mandatory evacuation. And obviously, I do highly recommend that you do uh, obey that mandatory evacuation and leave because it will be a very serious situation. And if they want you to evacuate, it's probably for your better good. Now, anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Stay safe and I'll see you guys in the next updates.